love clever people. Welcome back to my review for Beauty and the Beast. So Beauty and the Beast is a Disney remake of the 1992 film Beauty and the Beast and stars Emma Watson and some other actors that I like. Kevin Klein's in it. Dan Stevens in it. Um, Josh Gad. Ian McKellen. Emma Thompson. Ton of actors. Huge cast. And I wasn't really looking forward to this movie. I haven't seen the original yet, and I don't really like Disney that much. I mean, once in a while I'll like a Disney movie like Zootopia, but most of them I find to be the same stuff over and over again, and I find them all to be like 5 out of 10 material, and sometimes worse, like Moana. But I actually really liked Beauty and the Beast. It, like the last couple of films I reviewed, I've reviewed, but better, uh, this film was absolutely gorgeous. Cinematography, costume design, color palette, everything. Visual effects, it's gorgeous. It was exceptionally done. I wonder what kind of budget this film had. It must have been gigantic, considering everything they had to do. It was stunning. I expected the music to be awful, but it's a good thing that the only... That the only bad song was the second song during the credits. So the music was really well done. I don't think music is as good as the original music. I did listen to the soundtrack of the original before I saw this one. Uh, but it's still really good. Emma Watson has a surprisingly good voice. So does Emma Thompson. Uh, it was really good in that part. The movie's just a lot of fun. Don't, don't walk in expecting a masterpiece of cinema. It is fun. It's not a turn your brain off movie. I do have some problems with it. But it is very entertaining. There were a lot of jokes in this film that did work. A lot that didn't. That's part of the bad. And the acting from everyone was really good. And Watson did a fantastic job. Everyone did a fantastic job except for like Dan Stevens is okay. As a beast, he did a really good job, but the scenes where he's human did not do too. He wasn't too good in it. Now let's move on to the bad. Like you expect, this film was pretty cheesy. I wouldn't call it cliche. It does use cliches, but I'll give it a pass because it's a remake. But it was incredibly cheesy. There were a lot of things that just would never really happen in real life. I understand it's a fantasy, but still. A lot of things, a lot of things just felt a little, it could have been like switched a little bit to make it seem a bit more realistic, but they went with like a kind of cheesy route, which I, I can kind of accept, and that's why I didn't dislike it. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of comedy that didn't hit, mainly just like butt jokes and fart jokes. And th there weren't too many, but there were some, and that did pop out. And the second act feels a bit rushed. The romance between uh, Belle and the Beast felt kind of rushed at times. I mean, like, one scene, the Beast is, like, yelling at Belle, and, like, two scenes later, he's like, oh, you know, I really like this book. But overall, I really liked Beauty and the Beast, and that's why I will give it a 7.75 out of 10. So, guys, I may or may not be reviewing the Belko Experiment on Sunday. I don't want to, but I may uh, just force myself to see it. I do a lot for this channel. I do know that I will either be seeing Train Spotting 2 or uh, Gifted on Monday or Tuesday. So that review should be up soon. Um, I should be seeing Song to Song going up to Hollywood. I'm seeing either that or some other limited release film. I'm also going to see Power Rangers Life and Chips. So excited for Chips, man. It's going to be such a great movie. But that concludes my review. I'm Connor Gilbert, and this has been the Clever Critics. Goodbye.